So, ladies and gentlemen, what I asked you uh, to do is I asked you to find, f solve this, right? And pretty much what you guys look at this is, this is the same thing as what we're really doing. We're solving for this. Since this is a quadratic, this is helping us find our roots and our zeros of a quadratic function, right? It'd be the same thing if I said, you know, this is equal to f of x. Well, remember, to find our x-intercepts, we plug in 0 in for f of x and then solve. So what we're doing when we're solving this is we're finding the x-intercepts. We're finding the roots of our quadratic, all right? So what we need to do is we need to solve this. Now, we learned a lot of different steps. We learned completing the square. We learned factoring. And we learned quadratic formula. Factoring, if it's factorable, is usually the quicker method as long as you have a lot of practice with the factoring technique. So there's two ways you guys can do it. You can immediately just look at this as two factors and see if it's factorable. We know my first two terms have to multiply to give me 2x. That one just has to be x. Then we know my last two numbers have to multiply to give me 3, or a positive 6. Right? They have to multiply to give me a positive 6. But, um, and maybe I didn't. No, it is negative 6. You're right. Oh my God. Uh, no way. I know. I'm sorry. It's right there in the book. You're right. Jade, you asked me that? Or Zara? I know somebody asked me that over there. I apologize. So obviously, I didn't have time to look at it. I just wanted to write it up there. So when you look at this, yes, it is a negative 6. Because obviously, there's no two numbers that are multiplied give you your positive, but then are multiplied give you positive 6, but then are going to add to give you that negative 1. However, when we look at it in this format, when we look at it in this format, what we have is we have two numbers that are going to multiply to give us 6. So there's a lot of different numbers that multiply to give us 6. You have 6, a 6 and 1, and we have 2 and 3. But what we remember by applying, for, by applying our formulas that all right, this 2 is going to multiply. So let's double check this. 2x times x is 2x squared. Um, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Then 2x times negative 2 is going to give you a negative 4x. And 3 times x gives you a positive 3x. So negative 4x plus a positive 3x is going to leave you with a negative x. So therefore, this would be the correct form that you'd have. Because remember, you have to multiply the 2 times the negative 2 and the 3 times the x. And then you combine those numbers. You Remember, you multiply the outer and the inner to combine for your middle term. Well, 2x times negative 2 is negative 4. 3x times x is 3x. So now I have this factored. All right, And you guys could do, the, remember the diamond? If you guys wanted to do the diamond, a times c, negative 12, negative 1, then you could say uh, negative 4 and 3. right? You guys could do this method and then do grouping and all that kind of stuff. That's not a problem, but I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to work on it a little bit quicker for you. So now we have a factored form that's equal to 0. So we can apply our lovely 0, zero product, product, product property. Thank you. So therefore, we could say 2x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. I don't really need my parentheses. So hold on. I actually got a little bit quicker myself. We took this. We factored it down, right? What I want you guys to understand are these are what we call your factors, right? This times this multiplied to give you this. Since that times that multiplied to give you a solution, we know that this divides into the polynomial this many times, and this divides into the polynomial that many times. Does that make sense? I'll say it again because I really need you to internalize this. This, num this binomial divides into this polynomial this many times. This polynomial divides into that polynomial that many times. That many times. Why? Because that times that equals that polynomial. <coughs> Think about it this way. If you broke down 12 into 3 times 4, right? 3 divides into 12 4 times. 4 divides into 12 3 times. 3 times 4 gives you 12, right? So these are what we call our factors. And this comes into our synthetic division. When I gave you one factor, how do you find the other factors? Well, you take that factor and you divide it into the other factor, right? Yeah. All right. So now we get to this point, and we say it says find, you know, solve, but they're asking us to find the zeros um, in our root. So what we're going to do is now solve for x. So therefore, we have 2x equals negative 3 plus 2. I have x equals 2. So now I have x equals negative 3 halves and x equals 2.
OK, so we have x equals negative 3 halves and x equals 2. So if we call these our factors, these are what we call our zeros. These are what we call your zeros. And it's going to be important, ladies and gentlemen, because these are, yes, graphically, these are also what we call our x-intercepts. All right? Or when we're dealing with a function, these are what we call our roots. Right? So it's the same, really kind of the same process, but I want you guys to understand if I say, hey, here are my zeros, what I want you to do is understand, yes, all right, here's the zeros and then the factors. So how are the factors and the zeros related to each other? Does anybody have an idea? How are the zeros and factors related to each other? Yes? Right. Well, when you take a factor, set it equal to 0, you find, and then solve, you find the 0, right? Yeah. And do you guys remember in that problem in your homework quiz that I did? Remember when I said using synthetic division? I said, oh, always set it equal to 0. Right? So exactly, when we're using synthetic division, what are we really dividing? What are we using to, what are we using to divide with synthetic division? Zero. We're using the zero, right? So even if we're given a factor, when using synthetic division, we just use the zero, right? So that's why it's not always, oh, just do the opposite sign. No, that's why we take our factor, set it equal to zero, and solve, because when using synthetic division, we use the zero, all right? However, just using long division, we just use the factor you know, and divide it in. But the main important thing what I want to do to at least express to you guys is the difference in the understanding of the factors. If I have an equation here and I want to define the zeros, you factor it, which gives you the factors, which multiply to give you your original problem. Then when you solve each factor for 0, you now get your zeros. All right? And that's going to give me up to our next two points that we're going to talk about. I just want you guys to really understand.